Hello Algebra 2 students, this is Mr. Marin. We're going to demonstrate two exponential problems, or at least finding the equation for the exponentials. Uh, you can see we've got two data points, 175, 3, 168.75, and for the second problem we have another exponential, 137.5 and 4, 15.82. Now, when I look at these two problems, I see one difference between the two of them. The first thing I recognize is the fact that the first one, you can see a definite growth between 75 and 168.75. And the second one, you can see a decrease from 37.5 down to the 15.82. So what we want to do is we want to go back into how we solve these exponential problems is when we look at that equation, y equals ab to the x. And if you remember from class, what we did a couple of times is we set it up as a numerator-denominator situation where we took out the x and the y and put in the data points and then tried to solve for a and b. So I'm going to take these two numbers and I'm going to go ahead and put them into this equation, I'm sorry, these two sets of numbers. First things first, take 168 and back here. 68.75 equaling AB. Taking out the Y, plug in the Y, taking out the X, plugging in the X value that gave us the start. Divided by 75 equaling AB to the first power. So now you can see I've got kind of a division problem set up here. And if you recall from class, A's cancel out in the numerator and denominator. That worked out nicely every single time. I've got three b's in the numerator, one b in the denominator, so that leaves me with b squared. And then I just take and divide those two numbers, the 168.75 and 7.5. So I get out the calculator, 168.75 divided by 75 equals 2.25. which equals b squared, so then what I want to do is take the square root of that. And again, just to make sure that everybody knows what the shortcut is with this, if you've got that answer in your calculator still, I got the 2.25. If I hit second root, which is over there by x squared, and then second answer, which is the negative button down here, second answer, that'll automatically take that 2.25 and drop it down, getting me a 1.5 b value. So what that tells me is my multiplier, or what gives me the next term, is going to be 1.5. Going back into one of my two original equations, I like this one, the 75 equaling AB to the first. I now get that situation where 75 equals 1.5 times A. And at this point, we just divide off that 1.5 off of both sides. And you're going to see a equaling 50. So now I've got the b value, I've got the a value, just rewrite it up here in this equation. y equals 50 times 1.5 to the x. Plug it into your calculator. Make sure that these two points come up in the table. If that works, then congratulations, we've got this problem solved. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this work so I can work down here in the second problem. That. Let's take a look at the data points down here. I'm going to go through the same exact process that I did here. Start by making this fraction so I can cancel stuff out with this given information. So I'm going to take the 15.82. You might be saying to yourself, why would I be taking the smaller number? Well, in this case, that 4 is going to turn into the exponent, that b value. And I want to keep that higher exponent in the numerator so that when they cancel, I don't have b is left in my denominator and have to cross multiply a mess there. So 15.82 equaling ab to the fourth power divided by 37.5 equaling ab to the first. And once again my a's cancel out. That was the one thing that we saw happen every single time. So make sure that that's the step that happens in your process. 4b is on top, 1 on the bottom, so I'm left with b cubed to equal whatever the division of those two numbers are. 15.82 divided by 37.5, which 
which I get to be about 0.42186666, so that's repeating. So I'm going to put that in here. Zero point four two one eight, and I'll just round it to seven. But instead of actually trying to get rid of that number in your calculator, I want you to do the cubed root of that. So a cubed root, you want to do second math. I'm sorry, not second math. Quit so that you're just on math. So that you're in this screen. You'll notice that there's a cubed root function in this particular screen itself. This is just pushing the math button. If I select it cubed root and then go ahead and drop that answer right in there. Again you can see I've got the 4.2186 still in there as the previous answer. If I go ahead and drop that in as a cubed root, it comes out to be 0 0.74999506017. A little rounding error for this 15.87 but it should round to 0 0.75. So that's going to be the B value. That's going to be the multiplier. It gets us from term to term. So Again, I want to plug this back into one of my equations. I like that 37.5 equaling AB to the first, because that one's a nice, easy number to start with. Divide off that 0.75, and you're going to get an A value that equals 50. So, rewriting this equation now, we get Y equals 50 times 0.75. just a little bit, times 0.75 to the x. And I can see how we've got a number up here, we had a value bigger than 1, gave us that increase, and a number smaller than 1 for those v values that gave us a decrease. And that will be important for the next discussion when we talk about the uh, increases and decreases for exponentials and sequences.